today I'm going to show you one of the most interesting places in Victoria's Golden Triangle. I'm here at Wanyara near Denali, which is a brilliant destination for free camping, bushwalking, cycling and gold prospecting. Wanyara was once a gold mining township of which little trace remains today, but an attentive walk through the bushland of the area can reveal many clues to the region's rich history. An excellent free campground enjoys a peaceful setting and is well equipped with picnic tables, fireplaces, a stone shelter and toilets. This campground provides a base where you can set up for the weekend and explore the fascinating historical features of the area. So let's head out and take a look around. One of the most striking old stone buildings in the Victorian goldfields, Morton's Welcome Inn is a gorgeous feature situated not far from the campground. Built by convict Michael Morton in the 1850s, this building was a home for his family, a provision store and a public bar frequented by local miners, licensed 1866 to 83. Morton was put on trial in Ireland in 1847 and convicted for cow stealing. He was sentenced to 10 years and was transported soon after. His transportation journey took him on several ships across several years and upon landing in Hobart in 1850, he was granted a conditional pardon. Two years later, Morton headed for Melbourne, at a time when the gold rushes were in full swing, and by 1854 he had settled here in the Golden Triangle. He soon married and established his business, building his store and later licensing it to serve liquor, but not before finding himself in trouble with the law for serving on the sly without said license. Sly grog was certainly a popular trade on the gold fields, and a government inquiry in 1853 found that much of the grog was laced with additives, such as tobacco and pharmaceutical spirits. I wonder if Morton ever served the infamous Goldfields cocktail, Blow My Skull Off, a potent mixture of rum, Turkish opium, cayenne pepper, spirits of wine, cocculus indicus, and water. Sly grog stores were often run by women, and Sovereign Hill have created their own modern sly grog in commemoration of these hard-working women who traded under great risk and in harsh conditions to support themselves and their families. You won't find Turkish opium in this one, but Ballarat's Gin of the Goldfields contains a unique blend of botanicals sourced from the organic gardens at Sovereign Hill. Morton's Inn is set right alongside the road, and visitors can get an excellent up-close look at this beautiful place. Due to its age, the structure of the building is unstable. For your own safety, it's best to appreciate this building from the outside. If you head a little further along the road beyond Morton's Inn, you'll come across this charming stone crossing over the seasonal Wanyara Creek. Constructed in the 1860s, this crossing is an interesting feature which reminds us that although this place is fairly quiet today, the road here was once well used. On your drive into the campground from the main road, you'll head past the beautifully restored Wanyara Cemetery, and you will also notice a series of mysterious graves along the roadside. Very little is known about the graves. The stones and ornaments decorating them have been placed in the last few decades, before which they were simply mounds of earth, like many other lone or unmarked graves throughout the region. One particular grave has white painted stones and elaborate decorations, and has an interesting myth attached to it. There is a local story that a prostitute died in the area in the mid-19th century and was denied burial within the cemetery by the cemetery trustees. This particular grave was thought by locals to be her resting place and it has been restored over the years to its current state. There is no evidence that this is a prostitute's grave and there is a more likely story that a miner had buried his dog by the track in the 1930s. Regardless of exactly who is buried in the graves along Wanyara Cemetery Road, they have been beautifully adorned with stones and flowers, are maintained by locals and are an interesting feature of the area. If you head into the bush beyond this lone grave, you'll come across the diggings which spread out along the Wanyara lead. This is a great example of shallow workings following a lead and is an interesting place to check out, but watch your step. There were a number of gold rushes to the area and you'll find evidence of old gold diggings all over the place. Here on Geovic we can see the Wanyara and Catch Me If You Can deep leads running through the area, as well as shallow leads. We can also see a number of diggings, mines and relics marked on the map. The cemetery itself is a great place to visit for a look around. Beautifully restored and complemented by informative signs, this cemetery offers us a fascinating glimpse into the past. The oldest surviving marked grave here is from 1859, although you will find that there are many other unmarked graves scattered through the grounds. 
A walking track takes you on a circuit around the cemetery, and there are several notable graves, including a few with striking wooden markers, and the grave of Michael Morton, whose inn we visited earlier. The wooden grave markers are a rare feature, and if you're interested in checking out more of these, I recommend you go take a look at the Stuart Mill and Tymor cemeteries. If you head a little down the road from here, you'll soon come across an earlier burial ground in the bush to the left. A small cluster of graves lie here, marked by stones and surrounded by gold workings. The Wanyara area was also the scene of an 1850s double murder. If you come to Wanyara from the Denali side, you may notice a sign for Murderer's Hill alongside the road, which is named for the terrible incident which occurred nearby. In 1857, the bodies of two unfortunate men were discovered in a prospecting hole between Denali and Jones Creek, clearly the victims of foul play. This double murder has been extensively researched by the Denali Museum, and the story they've uncovered is beyond belief. Their website shares the story in detail and is definitely worth checking out. I'll put a link to this in the description. You'll discover plenty more history throughout the bushland of this area, and the region's walking and cycling tracks are a great way to explore. The Wanyara Walk sets out from the campground and takes you on an interesting 7km return journey through the surrounding state forest. You'll discover gold workings, remnants of the old township, and more. The Wanyara Cycle Track offers a 20km circuit with lots to see along the way. I'll put links to these tracks in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about the fascinating history of the Victorian goldfields, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you'd like to support this channel, just hit the like button and share this video.